Hello YouTube, bye guys, uh, um, this is Chart Cars and today we'll be installing this new carbose seat to the sedan on the background, 3 series BMW and we'll be replacing the sport seats that, came, uh, that I actually installed in the car because the car came with non-sport seats and funny thing both of these seeds are from the UK. Anyway, alright, so now we'll be showing how to install them. And this is what the final result looks like. And I'm going to show you how it's done. And you might be wondering, uh, uh, and a few notes that this side will clear the, the, the B pillar just fine, but that side won't. It's going to rub a bit. I don't know if it's because the the, the actual seating rail position in the car original of the original seats in the car is a bit different um, than uh, each side. So I don't know if that's a part because I tried this seat there and that seat here and the rails and the subframe. I just changed it around a bit, but. I, do, I seem to get always the same result. But anyway, uh, I'll show you how it's done now. And yeah, uh, a few notes before you start doing this. Mm, that the ride feel is going to change quite a bit. Because of, um, even if you might not think about it, but then when you change the, the original seats to the these bucket seats the the ride is going to be feel a bit stiffer even if you don't have stiffer springs because the the seat cushioning isn't that thick anymore and it doesn't absorb your weight as much and uh, i have to say that as a taller guy these are excellent these are the corbeau Mm, not FIA approved bucket seats so keep that in mind they're really cheap for this price point or this this quality I mean they are 420 do, uh, pounds a pair with double locking runners that's a huge plus and Corbeau do offer the, the subframes but not on the website I looked, so it's corbeau.com on the American website, not on the UK one, so... And if they offer with the runners, if you order it directly from the website, they offer them with the runners also. Single locking or double locking runners, and I don't know, you might have to message them if you want to adjust the subframes but um, you might get them from there too but I got these from raceparts.cc and they fit just fine with uh, with these keep that in mind that you have to space this seat out a bit and the driver side you have to space it a bit more mm. Yeah, and it's really firm the, the ride, and and yeah, and, and and for um, if you wonder, I think the the, the lumbar support for this, uh, compared to original, is better. Even if you have, if you don't buy any, your Scarborough offers a inflatable, hand inflatable, lumbar support. I might try that out if if I feel necessary, but. With this setup, this supports your lumbar way better than the orig original seats, and these feel awesome. I mean, these these feel like they're ready for the racetrack that that they are. These are the more track day oriented, so these are not FIA approved. I'll key, I'll put the link down below to show uh, on their website where to get these. So here we are on a hot and dark attic of my mom's. Uh, here I have uh, two old seats. 
one of which I already took out the rails. And uh, yeah, I'm filming alone, so it, it might be it might, it might be a bit shaky and stuff. Anyway, uh, we're going to take this rail out so we can fit the new seats in. And you only need a 10 mil key to take these four uh, nuts out. So now this rail will just can be taken off. Right, that's this side out. So it it goes out like this, and this is the plastic part where that goes the, that connects the release uh, mechanism for the sliding action of the rails. Now it's off, and now it's the other side is off too. So this is handy too because you get to keep your seat belt buckle. All right, then let's continue at the work uh, at the workshop slash yard slash wherever we might be at the time. <coughs> so we got these rails out because we need to salvage a few parts if you want to really mm, replace the the. OEM seats with uh, bucket seats. Mm, I used a cutting wheel to cut the stud off here that hold, held this in place. So this is the passenger side seat rail or the driver side depending on if you're driving around the UK or mainland Europe. And we took this out this is the ear that holds in the, the seat belt and I grind it off the rust and next thing before installing it, it uh, we'll need to repaint it and I bored, uh, drilled this out to a 10mm hole so that it can uh, it can be attached in this seat frame to here with the same bolt that holds down this actual rail to the car because there wasn't a good place to uh, on the bucket seat subframe that it came with to install it in now and then on the other side you'll have to use a cutting wheel again to uh, take this out because I used I tried to get it out with the torque screw that it's here but it just sheared off the T40 head I had and uh, it's really tight in there so I used the cutting wheel and again I took out the rust and before actually sitting uh, Fitting these on here, you'll need to drill out holes for this L shaped metal thing so it doesn't move around like this. But I think I'll, I'll cut this straight piece out so that I can drill a smaller hole to keep it in place and because this is quite thick metal so I don't want to burn through many drill bits okay so then um, you actually will need, be needing one more piece from this so this is the, the wire harness for the seat belt uh, and depending on the seat, the passenger seat has a a, a a sensory mat that detects if there's a passenger on. So you'll need to actually 
I'll put a link down in the description below to um, you can buy a a little resistor thing that deletes the sensory mat thing or you can program it if you know how to All right we won't be needing this anymore so we'll start by uh, detaching the seats from the car now this is the passenger side seat because I already took out the driver seat but this is the exact same process it's only a mirror image so you start by taking these caps off on the front one on the transmission tunnel side and the other on the door side like that and then you'll need a 16 mil uh, hex key mm. and a ratchet and then just crack it open this shouldn't be too tight and then the other side and with this you can actually take them out by hand like that and I like to uh, open up the front at first and then tighten it last because this has the, the, the studs that have the grooves in it so you can position the seat nicely alright so then you just grab the, the lever and push the seat as front as you can and then you raise the seat also so you push the middle button or press the buttons that you have on the electric seat and then we'll move on to the back and then uh, I should I recommend tightening this uh, seat belt bolt first because when you unbolt uh, the seat bolts you the seat will be ha will have a lot of movement you can't just do this by one hand like this all right so then it's really loose now so you can unscrew it by hand the rest of the way Alright, and then just take this out. You can let this hang because it shouldn't escape. And then you unbolt the two rear bolts. And these two are fairly loose after the first. Uh, the, the initial tightness, so you can just unscrew them by hand too. All right, you can leave these here so you don't lose them, and we'll get back to them when we attach the new seats. All right, so then. Uh, to remove the seat from the car, I recommend if you have a sedan or a touring car, you use the back uh, rear uh, doors. So, put the seat back uh, down and slide it all the way back. And then just tilt it away and undo the wire harness. So, the wire harness located right here. So, on the other side there is this um, black tab that you can pull open. And then you should get this free.
like that. Pry this open with something and then the plug should come just right out. And now you'll need to salvage this part also from the passenger side seat. Uh, and this car is from a, uh, this seat is from a British car, so this used to be a driver's side seat. So this doesn't have a pressure mat and under the the seat cushion. So um, this doesn't. You need to get yourself one of these plugs. I'll leave a, a link in the description below where, where to get this one. But this is a sensory mat dealy, so it's a. Uh, really cheap one. I think it's just a resistor or something. You can do this by home if you know how to wire it up, but I don't like to solder that much so that I just ordered it online. So you'll need to have this because of course the new carbo seat or whatever bucket seat you want uh, doesn't have a sensory mat to detect if there is a passenger seating there or not. So you'll need to have this. This is the base bracket that will be attaching to the car and this is where we will attach the seat to and now um, so this orientation is for the left hand drive, uh, driver side I've tried it uh, like this too but then if you have any shorter drivers there's not enough uh, uh, slide on this uh, on the sli sliders to actually so that the shorter driver doesn't reach the pedals or the steering wheel so the, the or right orientation is like this and these brackets are from raceparts.cc I got them off eBay they have a store there and then uh, what I did I modified this a bit, I drilled a new hole, uh, actually two holes, one here and one here. And this is for these parts. Uh, I told I grinded up of the L part, so this is, uh, the hole is for this, so this doesn't move around. Now, I lacquered these already, so I hadn't, haven't patented these because I don't have this color. But I lacquered them so they should be rust protected. And now uh, this is the only modification I did. Now that I attached the transmission tunnel side, uh, I used a fairly long 6 mil hex bolt. Um, and I used two 17 mil nuts as a washers because this the, the seat came actually with four attached spaced between the rail and the side mount from Corbo but Corbo I don't know how to pronounce it actually but anyway and now mm, and then and a knot here an I lock knot so now mm, I'll be sh I'll show you how to attach the other side but before I actually do attach the the side mount and the rail to the bottom bracket I recommend you Tighten and uh, torque these uh, the side mount to the rail. The hex bolt is better than a norm normal bolt because then, if you use a normal bolt, I'll show you what happens. It will fit, yeah, fine, but then it will spin around and you don't have you won't have any space to put torque to it. So that's why I don't use these. I will use them on the seats though, uh, on the side of the seats, but not on the these. Okay, so I'll then slide this in the two nuts, and then put it here. And then preferably use a washer, but actually. The bolt is not long enough, so I just screw the nut on. And then slide this forward and grab the bolt, the two 17mm nuts. Just 
slot this on, this here, and then the nut underneath. And then, then just, uh, I recommend tightening the, fir the front one first, because it has more play. So when you tighten that first, then the, then the play disappears and you can and then slide this forward and torque this down, like so. Now I will show you why I used uh, so much spacer, uh, nut or bolt or washer to space this because now when I put this thing on and bolt it to the car, now it has enough clearance to slide over it and give me just the bolt length of uh, more slide to the back. Because before this, it stopped right here. I don't know. Uh, it, I was fairly comfortable with this setup, but I don't know. Just to be sure, I wanted to try out with more adjustment. And now, when you've put these sliders on, put in, put them on the same uh, place. Yeah, same amount of teeth. Yep, and then put the sliding slider uh, bracket thing on place. And now these will actually be quite wider than the the base position that Corbell supplied it them to you. So you'll need to stretch this U shape out. And then you'll need to bend this in again, so it will sit flush uh, against these. And then now, before putting the seat on, put this in, like so. Now that we're inside the car, you can take a seat on the back seat, and uh, from there you can comfortably position this in the car. Now. Uh, the most tricky nut to tighten is this, the, the front most uh, that's closest to the transmission tunnel, because there's actually not enough space to fit a uh, wrench from the top. So you'll have to do it underneath here, like really annoyingly, one quarter of a turn at a time. So that's why I didn't put the seat on yet. And then put this side on. And then you might want to grab the... Slide these. And yeah, just it, it's easier to... Do this with my hand. Separately. Like this, alright. So then put the seat belt brackets on and tighten these bolts. Right then, so this one and this one. Right then. And slide the bolt in. Now you should tighten this corner first, because this doesn't have any adjustment, because it's just a round hole. And this, the others have adjustment, because they have a, they have a different shaped holes to give you adjustment after you put this in. So it has a little play. And then this uh, actually won't sit flush, but Mm, you will get it flush because th there is enough uh, play in the floor mat to let you, let you tighten it 
properly. Like you see, now it's straightening up, straightening, straightening up. Like so. That's not enough. And this is two. And then try the sliders so it fits and slides all the way back. Yeah. That's good. And then tighten this. And then you can put the plastic cap on. And then this side will it's a bit trickier because as you can see you can't slide a socket that well. Actually you can get it started so after it's hand tight you can continue with the socket but then the final tightening you have to do with the norm normal allen wrench. No not allen wrench. Uh, I don't know what's it called, normal wrench. Like this and from here. So one quarter at a turn at a time. Like so and this should be tight enough. And then put the plastic cap on too. Just go with you. Alright, now that it's on, it's on. And lastly, you'll need to attach this the seat belt to the seat belt here. Now you'll have to do this do this last because when you actually tighten this. You can't access this bolt anymore. So start by hand tightening and then when you can continue with the wrench. Like so. So now before installing the seats <coughs> I wired them up. So mm, I used these two holes here to zip tie this connector here so it doesn't move and uh, get caught in places that I don't want and then zip tied this uh, here and now connected it here uh, so it has enough play to go from full lock back and full lock front and then this side is the same so zip tie here this goes from here zip tied here and the only different thing is that I zip tied this securely here so it doesn't uh, bash around when I drive or does get tangled up in the rails or anything else or any <coughs> place else that might break it. So now to installing the seats. Now I've put this seat uh, roughly in place and now I'll use uh, the two bolts that uh, the seam came, seat came installed to the side mounts uh, for the inside, uh, for the transmission side, and the other side I will, I will use a bit of uh, spacers because to get the seat as snugly here as possible. Uh, so just hand tighten first, put it here on the side mount, and the only place you can put it is in top because the the, the second uh, one, the the bottom of the seat will take to the, uh, it will, how to say, uh, the side mount or the bolt here will touch the seat bottom before you can reach the second uh, place on the side mount here. Hand tighten first and then use the 12 mil ratchet and socket.
so don't tighten it fully so you can adjust the seat a bit and uh, pull all the slack you can from these wires so you can you get play enough play so you can slide it front and back and yeah then then uh, you'll need to actually reach and slide the seat back so you can uh, fit the fucking bolt that I just dropped. So <clears throat> with this side we'll use a bit of spacing. So I have two 19 mil nuts and two washers in between in between the side mount and the seat and then I have one uh, 19 mil or nut and two washers on the front because the seat is uh, actually narrower on the rear than the front that's not what you want in women right uh, so um, yeah so just uh, and then also a washer because this uh, is just a regular hex bolt so it's uh, it, it needs a washer to not go through the holes and, and otherwise nicely sit and then we'll tighten them up the rails the way they sit this is too uh, narrow to flip this around and use the, the the other way around so that you attach it from this side here and it's too wide to just bolt directly this to the seat so that's why we're using a bit of spacing between the seat and the side mount I like to tighten it by hand because then I feel the tightness so if it's too tight or not and this is about tight enough that I can tighten it before I, I start to break the composite seat. Right so now let's move to the other side. <laughs> 